<laughs> okay, now the fun part. Now I'm just going to play with some colors and I'm going to add um, orange, shades of orange, orangey pink, and yellows. Got a really transparent yellow here, so I'm going to probably start with that and see what that does against that pink. And I'm I've got water in my brush. I'm picking up water. I don't think you can see my water jug. I changed my angle of my camera from my last video, so you can't see my water, sorry. But I'm picking up a little bit of water and I'm just bringing it over to my plate um, and picking up just a little bit of this yellow and making a thin wash um, with the water. And then I'm going to touch it on my paper towel so it's not too, too wet. And then take it over here and, ooh, that's so pretty. Look at that. It's already, I like it. See how you're still seeing that streakiness, but it's changed the, the color a little bit. And I'm not gonna do too too much. Every, I'm not doing it like everywhere. I'm not gonna cover my whole canvas. That's much better. See, just that little bit adds so much more character to that painting than it was before. Um, it's very flat without this added step. Um, so I'm just gonna add and it's kind of going away, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Touch it on my paper towel a little bit. Yeah. See, and I'm not going to add it everywhere. I'm just kind of play with it and see. I'm going to look, reference my picture a little bit. You can see in here where there's a few highlights kind of coming into the middle, but this area is kind of dark. And then along these edges are kind of uh, orangey yellow in places. So um, I'm just kind of referencing that a little bit and keeping the yellow sort of in the highlighted areas, but um, loving it. Okay, so much better already. Um, don't forget your background ones. They'll need a little bit of that too, just a hint of it. You don't want them to be left out and looking like they're a totally different color. Okay, let's do, let's see what happens when we mixed a little bit of this orange with This is a cadmium orange. I'm going to add it with my lightest pink and make sort of a salmon color. I love, yeah, that's better. Good. And then it's just toning down that orange so it's not quite so bright. It would be a little bit too much, I think, on top of this. Um, but with a little bit of that pink mixed in, it makes it a nice creamy salmon-y pink. I'll make, even darken it a little bit with that magenta. Very nice. Okay, I hope you can see these colors okay. So that's the that's the original. These are my two and then we've made this color um, that's kind of a salmon salmon color. And I'm going to lightly, very, very lightly use that and add a little bit of streaks here and there with this color. Just it's kind of similar to this background color already. I hope you could see that. I was hope I wasn't holding it up. I probably was holding it up too high, sorry. I'll leave it down here. I made myself tape mark so that I would keep it where you could actually see it while I was painting. I move around. I Often when I'm painting, I move my canvases around a lot. So, um, But it makes it hard if I don't have somebody helping me with the video because then I don't realize when I've lifted it out of the camera view. I've done that more than once, so trying to get better. It's tricky. My husband doesn't want to be my videographer. He has a job, so Fig go figure. Okay, so um, I, you didn't see what I did here. I picked up some more of that lighter pink color. Now I'm going back over some of that salmon um, with that highlight color just to kind of tone it down a little bit add another layer on top um, gonna blend that out a little bit there it's going over the top of that yellow that we did um, and like I said this is just very organic process I'm just playing with it and adding layers very very lightly um, Going along these edges, 
to add layers of color. Okay? It's coming along really nicely. Liking it. Add some to this background one here. Just a little tiny bit. Little indication of color. These are still have some highlight showing. I mean, they're not, they're, they're getting hit by the sun too. They may be shadowed a little bit by these petals that are over the top, but you need to make, make sure that they have a little bit of highlight too, even if you are leaving some of the area around the other petal dark. Make sense? Okay. And I'm going to go back in here and add, I'm going to make this look like my streaks are going down here and then there's just a little bit of shadow right in here, which is what it more likely look like so that it's not like a solid band of color like it was before I've added and left dark dark spots but added the white kind of over the top lightly so that when I go back in with the dark it'll look more um, natural okay very nice like that and now it's just kind of a matter of tweaking it and playing with it until you're satisfied with the level of um, shadowing and highlighting. And I'm going to keep adding more layers of this light color and then go back in with the dark and then add more light and then go back in with the dark and maybe add a couple more colors. Um, it's just up to you how much you want to play with this. Okay, that's looking really nice. And some of these areas, I think I'm going to even go in now with some of this really bright white. Um, this is actually the off-white. I don't know if I'm even going to use that white. I may use it down in here. We'll see. Actually, I think I will use it right now. Just a little bit. Maybe mix it in with this so that this is a little bit brighter. And I still have all my other paint colors on here, so it's not a true white, so it's not so quite so stark. You wouldn't, I wouldn't go in with a true true white on top of this. Um, it would just be too much. So, ooh, that's really bright. Okay, so I'm gonna have to be real careful. Do this really lightly. I'm barely touching this on my canvas. And this is just, I'm only gonna do this on a couple of places, so that's, really nice. I like that. I'll bring it down here so that it looks like it's connecting. That's good. I'm going to do it up here. The edges of these on this picture, if you look at it, these edges are the brightest areas. So I'm just re-emphasizing those areas. And this kind of got muddy in the picture, but there, I know there's other colors and streaks going on in here, so that's why I'm adding more stuff going on than it looks like in that picture. But these, I want to emphasize these edges that are, they're, they're where the petals are kind of curving up and catching the light. So, okay, that's good. And I'll probably end up going back over a lot of this with my yellow. But I want it to have a good contrast. Much better. Okay. Picking up some more of that blend color that we made. And we'll go over here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep this so you guys can see it. But it's really hard to paint in this direction. So there we go. Generally, when I'm painting, I like to hold it so that I'm painting this direction because that's your natural direction to write, you know, when you're, um, unless you're left-handed, of course. Um, but um, so a lot of times it's just more comfortable to paint in that direction. And you'll have a little bit more control too. So you may try that if you're struggling um, with an angle, you know, and you're finding that you're having a hard time getting it just right, um, try, turn, turn your painting around, um, angle it the other way, and you'll find it super easier, so much better. Okay. Okay, and I'm just, this is starting to dry, so now I'm just kind of lightly dry brushing this on. Um, it's just going to kind of pick up the grain of the, the texture of that canvas 
and where it's raised up a little bit, it's catching all of these raised areas of uh, the paints catching on them and it adds a neat texture. Okay, I'm gonna pick up some more of that creamy white and go back over right here. This is gonna be probably one of my brightest areas right here. These two petals are probably gonna be your focal point area, sort of, they're the most prominent ones. So you probably pay more attention to them than the rest. I mean, you want them all to look good and match, but there, sometimes when I'm painting, I will give a little bit more detail to um, a, one little area. And that helps draw your eye in and make it more interesting. And then some of the background might be a little bit fuzzier, like a little bit less defined. Um, that's the way, that, way your eye works anyways, when you're looking at stuff. So I'm just kind of controlling where you're looking, I guess. I don't know. So that's better. That was much easier doing it upside down. Okay, I'm really liking this. This is coming along good. And um, this is getting too, um, disappearing too much. I'll add a little bit more white to this edge right here. Just with the, with the, my brush straight up on its edge, I'm just added a little bit of a line right there and I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Okay, because those colors are, those two areas are very similar and there's not a whole lot of that darker in between anymore. So you want, that's when I come in with a, a brighter pop of something to make sure that you can see that it's different. But this is still a little bit um, too, too close to this white. So I'm gonna go back in now with my dark, now that I've got some highlights in there that I can work with. And I added actually a, a burnt, um, I'm sorry, a ultramarine blue. So I thought that that might be interesting against this pink. Just, I mean, you're barely gonna use any of this. I wanna caution you, you don't wanna go crazy with the blue because it will take over. But just in the most um, dark areas, maybe in some of these shadowed areas, and like down in here, I'm gonna add just a very, very light hint of this blue. In fact, I think I might cut it a little bit with this alizarin crimson to make it a little bit less obvious. That's better. It's a little bit more purpley blue now, or the violet. Okay, very nice. And it's very watery. You can see, hopefully, that this is um, just a very light wash. There's very little paint in my brush. It's mostly water, and, but it's not sopping wet. And I'm gonna, before I go to my canvas, I'm gonna just lightly t touch it on here to get off some of the excess moisture so that it's not dripping wet, okay? Then I'm going to get it up here so you can see. I'm gonna put it right along this edge here and just pull, ooh, very pretty. I hope you can see that, okay? Can you see that? I hope you can. Let me turn it here. I will do it over here. Very nice. I'm going to pick up a little bit more color. And pull it up a little bit farther. Nice. Okay. See, I don't know. Maybe you can tell against these ones that don't have it. But this has got now. It's just got another little extra depth of color in there. And you probably wouldn't even be able to tell if you looked at it that that was blue. Um, that's the beauty of this technique. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the straight blue and see what that looks like over here. That's not bad. Okay. Good. Do a little bit right here. I'm going to do a little bit on each of these petals. And then I'm going to do a little bit down in here just a little bit kind of like I did with the yellow where I didn't do it everywhere I'm just kind of choosing picking and choosing a couple areas that I want to emphasize okay I hope my battery's not going to die on me here looks like my battery's lights get low okay there we go 
very nice. Okay, then I'm going to pick up just some of this alizarin crimson now. And I, I cleaned out my brush and I left a little bit of water. I just kind of squeeze. I use my fingers a lot. I don't, I realize that, but I do. Um, and I just squeeze these off a little bit of the water, but you can use the side of your thing too. And I'm going to add a little bit of this into this middle area. That's nice. Here again, it's just adding another little bit of something over the top of your highlighted colors. This alizarin crimson is a transparent red, so, um, but it's not a true red. It's kind of an, I don't know, pinky red, a little bit of pink tone to it slightly. So I'm gonna, ooh, that's very pretty. Add it here and there and over the top of these highlighted areas it will transform your color but you won't really see that it's there it's not you're not seeing the streaks in this one you're that's why you need the streaks first does that make sense um, you want to put down colors that have these little streaks the the highlight the lighter colors that have streaks in them so that when you put these um, transparent colors like ultramarine blue and um, crimson over the top, you get that texture that you wouldn't have if you just did a wash of these without that underneath. It would look more flat. I hope this is making sense. Okay. I'm just, I hope you, I don't know if you can see that off camera. Just adding a little bit more water and picking up a little bit more of that lizard and crimson. I like the color. Okay, and this needs a little bit darker area, so this is another trick I will show you. I'm gonna get most of the color off here. I'm just touching on my paper towel so it's not too wet. Um, and I'm gonna pick up on the corner of my brush. So I'm gonna hold it at an angle and I'm gonna pick up this red this uh, darker magenta and a little bit of that alizarin crimson. And I'm gonna take it to a clean spot on my plate and I'm just gonna press down back and forth and you'll see how, this is called floating your color. You'll see how it has got a dark line here and it is um, blended to no color up here. So you may wanna play with this before you try it um, on your canvas but um, I'm gonna try it on a piece of paper a couple of times to see um, if you if you're seeing color on this side you can always test it on your paper towel and pick up a little bit of water then there that's better there's not as much color now so when I go to paint it is a nice um, straight um, graduated color dark to light to nothing dark color to nothing so and I did that by just picking up color on the corner of my brush and blending it out on my plate before I go to my canvas and I want to do that in this area and this gives me a little bit more control so that I can get down into this corner I'm going to set my brush on its angle and then I'm going to kind of turn it as I come up here I'm going to turn it flat so that there and then I'm gonna just barely touch it in there and pull it along this edge too okay so that made that nice and dark in here helped give me a little bit of control with my brush so that I didn't have to I mean I could probably have gone back in there with a very small brush and done that but it wouldn't have looked blended that way so um, I'm gonna use both of those colors because the Lizard and Crimson is a little bit too transparent. That Quinidrone uh, Magenta is has a little bit more opaqueness to it so that it um, will cover a little bit better. And I'm going to do it along this edge also because I think it needs a little bit more there. Can you see how that did? I hope you're catching that on the camera. It's kind of subtle, so it may not be easy to see, but I'm going to use it now. It doesn't really matter. I'm using it in the middle here. Um, just to kind of get the rest of it off my brush. 
so. And let me see if I need it anywhere else. I might use a little bit up in here. So I'll do it again. And you can see what I'm doing. One more time. So I got water. I touched it on my paper towel to get off the extra. I'm using the corner of my brush to pick up a little bit of paint. And then I'm taking it over here and I'm going to a clean spot and working it back and forth over and over in the same spot. So I don't want to do like this because then I get paint on this side. So I want to keep my clean edge against the outside so that it doesn't get paint in it. I want to keep it as clean as I can. Okay, And then I can always touch it over here and pull off some color if it's in there. And then right in here, I'm going to do like that. Yeah, that's good. That really, now it's kind of popping out that contrast better. Okay, and I think I'm going to do down in here too, a little bit. Yeah, maybe just straight up in here. I use this technique all the time. I don't even realize I'm doing it, probably. Um, I probably use it more than I realize, but it's from decorative painting. It's a decorative painting technique that um, works really well for this too. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here and I'm just toning down some of these lighter areas with some of that um, darker magenta. Um, just going back over some of them very lightly. It's got, I've got um, a little bit of water in my brush, but not a lot. I'm just kind of playing with the colors now and adding little streaks and if it looks too super bright somewhere I just tone it down a little bit with some of that darker color. Okay and I think I'm going to go back in uh, maybe do just a little bit more yellow of this transparent yellow. Just a little bit. And maybe just along some of these edges up in here. Yeah that's nice. Just a little bit unexpected color. That. I'm gonna do some up in here. And you wanna look out for balancing your colors too. So I had it down in here, so I may wanna bring some of that color up in here or even up on this one, just to um, balance your uh, overall colors. Um, Okay, that's nice. All right, this is looking sort of dark, so I think I'm going to add a little bit more of this light pink. And just, now as you're doing yours, you may, I don't know, you're just going to have to kind of work, um, work on yours as it comes because this is very um, individual so you'll just have to kind of um, play with it. I hope it's not too difficult for you to see what I'm doing here but um, you know just every now and then stop and take a look at it. Stop and walk away from it. Um, walk, even walk out of the room and set it up and then come walking back in and look at it with fresh eyes and a lot of times you will see things that you can't see when you're just right here working on it um, all at once. So that's what I would suggest at this point for sure. If you haven't already done this several times, I would stop, look at it, um, figure out where you want to, you know, if there's some areas that need a little bit of work or if there's an area that you can't tell where the petals are separated or whatever. Um, and you can go back in and fix that. It'll be easier to see it um, if you leave it for a minute and come back than if you're sitting here getting frustrated because you don't know how to finish it. Hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna add just a few more little, I think it needed a few more little streaks right in here. I'm almost done with this. I think I like it. It's got all kinds of neat colors going on. It's dark enough in here. I'm going to add more color on top of this. So that, don't worry about this edge being kind of ugly. It's not looking real good right now. But it will when we get done with it. Okay. See, I don't like that too much. So 
I'm going to take a damp paper towel and very lightly just kind of knock that back. Okay. Better. Okay. I'm just adding a few light streaks over the top of my, with this bright pink color, the lightest color of pink. And yeah. Okay. I think I'm liking that. It's looking good. Um, right in here, I may need to do something about that. I don't necessarily like that right there. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of the darker red right in there. And then I'm going to come back in with the lighter pink and define that edge a little bit better. There we go. Okay, better. Much better. And I need to remember to get a couple of... There we go. Okay. I think this is pretty good. Got some white on here. Down here. Um, all right, now I'm going to do, do the center. And I will show you this. I already put this yellow on. Um, I probably, if I hadn't done that, um, it really doesn't matter. You're going to use yellow, you're going to use this um, raw sienna, and probably some white <clears throat> and even some burnt umber maybe but um, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna switch brushes I showed you kind of what you would do with this one if you if I was to use this I'll do halfway with this if I'm gonna use this I'm gonna very lightly um, use the corner and tap along the edges to soften that edge and to add color and then I'm just sort of sort of dabbing it I guess that's the best word dabbing dab 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 and I'm gonna get some more of that burnt umber because I want to see some of that background color in there I've covered too much of that background I think so I'm gonna get some more burnt umber and this is all wet still so it'll be nice to yeah there we go See, I can go back in and soften some of this. Okay, and I'm just barely touching, dabbing, using the brush in different ways. I'm turning it as I work so that it's doing different things, um, making different um, marks on there. And then um, I'm gonna go in here and pick up some of this and I'm going to do it in here too just a little bit just very little bit because you still have some of this texture showing but I still want um, you know from your brush strokes that we left kind of showing but I still want to add a little bit of something to that just to make it more interesting and because it'll look like you left your brush stroke showing if you leave it the way it was so I do want to leave but I'm not covering the whole thing I hope you can see that um, I'm not covering up all of my dark umber or burnt umber I want to leave it nice and dark so I'm but I'm just indicating a little bit of other color okay so that's kind of what it would look like and I would probably keep going with a couple more colors that's what it would look like if you used this brush I'm gonna switch to this one this is a stippler it's a deer foot stippler it's called because it's got kind of a one side that's uh, wider than the other um, or it's angled and um, I'm not really going to add any water to this. Um, it works best if it's dry. And then I'm going to pick up some of this Naples yellow that's got the opaque. You, you can't really use the, this um, transparent yellow with, for this technique because it won't, you won't see it against these other colors. It'll kind of disappear. So unless you use white with it, you could always add a little bit of white to it. And I'm adding white to this color. Um, in fact, let me get pick up a little bit of this just on the corner and add it. So I've got like three colors going here. And I'm not going to blend it too much. I want these different colors to show when I um, put it on my canvas. So <clears throat> you don't want to over blend it on your palette or on your canvas. When you do it, you're going to tap lightly 
and um, see how it's going to leave some of these texture little uh, marks. The harder you press, the more um, covered it will be, but I'm barely tapping this. And it's just going to do some interesting little textures. And if you want to make sure that it doesn't look like um, if you're getting something that's looking like you've got a line of the same, 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 um, you want to tap up, back, up, maybe turn it a little bit, turn it a little bit, turn it a little bit, and tapping up and back, up and back, not in a straight line. So tap, tap, back, tap, tap, in between, tap, um, Really, there's not another brush that I know of that kind of does that. You can actually use, though, you can use a, um, if you don't have one of these, if you've got an old brush that you left paint in that kind of got um, frayed, uh, um, they work great for this technique. You can just um, load it up with some paint and um, try it, see how it looks. Okay, so that looks really nice. Um, Okay, I'm not going to cover too much of it because I don't want it to look like a solid piece of color. I want to have that background showing. And um, of course it would look totally different. I'll do a little bit over here so you can see what it would look like if I did it straight on this burnt umber because I had that yellow and, and stuff going on. Um, let's see, you can see how there's there's a little bit of difference but you can tell that I had other colors going on underneath there um, so and you can do it however you want I'm going to pick up some more of this burnt umber and go back over that because I don't necessarily want that that bright in there I'm going to clean that out more burnt umber the most horrible sounds. And... Okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to dry that out and then just pick up burnt umber and I'm going to tap back over just a little bit, cover that up some. I don't want it quite that bright. Okay, sorry I cut off there. Um, I just finished up by putting a little bit of the burnt umber over the top of this area that I was showing you. I didn't want it quite that bright. So, um, anyhow, at this point you could stop. I forgot to show you this one last color. It's this <clears throat> light um, ultramarine blue. Um, it's also called blue violet or periwinkle. Um, and I'm just picking up, I've got a little bit of water in my brush, I'm picking up a little bit. Um, on my brush and then I'm going to touch it out so it's not too bright. I don't want too much to go but I'm just going to use it um, very sparingly to add a little bit of bluish highlight. Well it's really more of a shadow I guess. But it's in the kind of highlighted areas. some up in here. It's a little bit more obvious than that, so I'm going to pick up some straight color and just sort of dry brush it on a little bit. Okay. Maybe a little bit down in here. Yeah. It's nice. See how that looks there against that pink? It just adds a little bit of a unexpected color, you might not even realize it was there unless you looked real carefully, but it'll just be another little color that can add some interest to our painting. especially good as a kind of a light shadow. Um, it works really well in areas that you want a shadow but you don't want it to be too dark. 
like you want to kind of indicate that there might be a little bit of something going on but it doesn't need to be super dark this is a great color to use okay I think that's good All right um, bit more of that pink right in here there we go just needed a little bit of something right there maybe right in here too I'll do it on this one also okay <clears throat> all right I'm gonna stop or I could work on this all day um, there she is hope you liked it hope you learned something if you'd like to show me um, your projects if you try this I would love to see them uh, my blog is Angela Anderson art dot blogspot dot com so you could send me a link there or you could post the link here on YouTube um, if you have a picture of your project uh, and thank you for watching bye bye